accused um, by their burden of proving somebody beyond a reasonable doubt. In other words, uh, let's take, for instance, the portrayal with the dummy yesterday uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the courtroom. Or even even the, the people identifying Trayvon's voice or George Simmons' voice. All of those things kind of contradict each other, and a jury's going to go back there, and I think, nobody's ever good at <laughs> guessing at juries, but I think they're going to go back there and say, okay, let's look at this instruction that says beyond a reasonable doubt. I think that's going to be the problem for the prosecution. Okay, and it may go to a jury tomorrow, so. Yes, yes, it, it, it will go to the jury tomorrow, according to this judge, and she seems to be one that you don't really want to cross, especially like Thank you very much. Hi, guys. Share WGN's complete coverage of the Zimmerman trial. We'll bring you updates throughout the midday. And for more, you can log on to WGNTV.com slash Zimmerman. A pregnant woman lost her baby after a group of people beat her. This happened in the 48th block of South on Monday night. Police said a group approached the woman who was 25 years old and exchanged words. The group then knocked that woman to the ground where she was hit repeatedly with a stump. The woman was nearly eight months pregnant. She was treated at the hospital where she delivered a girl's new stillborn. So far, no suspects are in custody. A man driving a faded gray minivan in the Wentworth area is wanted for attempted alluring. Tuesday night, a 13-year-old female was walking south down the 5,000 block of Dorchester when a man began following her. He yelled for the victim to get in his vehicle, but she ran away. The offender is described as an African-American man in his late 30s, heavy build, bald-headed, wearing glasses. His vehicle is a faded gray minivan. And in a similar instance, uh, on the same evening, a 14-year-old female was approached in the 700 block of South Carlisle Avenue. A man drove up to the teen and asked her if she wanted a ride. And when she ignored him, he jumped out of this white cargo van and tried to pull her into it. She hit it and ran away. He's described as a bald African-American man with what's described as a lazy, drooping eye with big pointed ears and severe acne. Governor Quinn strongly defends his power to strip lawmakers of their paychecks until they fix the state's whopping pension deficit. The governor used his so-called line-item veto authority to suspend pay for legislators and himself. He argues it's not right to pay people Alderman Tom Tunney. But now it appears a deal has been struck that will allow the Cubs to move forward with a $300 million plan to renovate Wrigley Field. But there's a hitch. There's still no word on what the rooftop owners plan to do. I talked to a spokesman for that group this morning. He tells me they have not seen the plans for these new plans for the outfield signs. He says, but they will be at the Landmark Commission's meeting today to speak out there. He says he didn't want to talk about that threatened lawsuit, but he says their position has not changed. They will take whatever action necessary to anyone who tries to block their views on the field. 63 Loyola University men's basketball team this afternoon at the White House because of this team's role in crossing a historic racial gap in college sports. 50 years ago, the Ramblers won the national championship in the NCAA tournament. On the road to victory, they played Mississippi State. Loyola started four black players in that game. Mississippi State was an all-white team. Mississippi's governor was against playing racially integrated teams. The matchup was later called the Game of Change. Still ahead this midday, 12 years later, the family of Gianda and Diamond Bradley brought the sister's disappearance and hope to keep the search for the girls active. We're dearly breaking, she really needs help, and I don't even know what to do. A dramatic 911 call. Hey, I dress like a football coach. You call that a block? Look at me, I'm a minister. <laughs> That's terrific, son. <laughs>
Don't I look handsome?